Well, thank you for coming today for our uh, cultural council of, no, no. Cultural affairs. Cultural affairs. We got two organizations here today, and everybody gets them mixed up for some reason, and I just really don't want to do that. But uh, thank you for coming and a part of this community group. That's how I refer to this. It's just a community event where we find out what's going on in the city of Brockton. There's many exciting things. And, and I wanted to just quickly start off with a recap. We did have a, an event uh, on July 31st that we were kind of, we never knew if it was really going to happen. And it was really exciting that it actually did, the uh, Midsummer Festival or Celebration, whatever it was called. And uh, uh, so it was really, you know, we, I enjoyed it. We set up a booth there for the Friends of Irish Research and for the um, David Allen Lampert Library, and we were very pleased with um, the results of it. Like any event that you do, you wish there were more people showed up. But I was excited about the opportunities that we did get there to talk about what we do. And again, uh, we're looking forward to having some future events uh, upstairs in the library and lectures going on. And, and uh, I know I'm going off to Worcester for the Labor Day weekend to give a lecture up there. And now we want to get them going here in Brockton instead of just virtually. So <clears throat> those, yeah, the virtual are nice. It's really comfortable when I'm just sitting in my office chair at home and having the lectures. But it's not the same as having a group of people in front of you. And anyone that's ever given a, a presentation on any topic they will tell you the exact same thing. Live audience beats pictures on a computer screen. And they only get big. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no, no. I have dual 32-inch screens, so uh, they stay a nice size, except if it gets to be a lot. We've had some where we've had 100 people involved, and uh, that doesn't fit on even those screens. But tonight, uh, we've got a number of folks that are here. We have a few folks that actually have to leave and go to other <laughs> events that are going on tonight. Um, I do want to put a quick plug in for the website happeninginbrockton.com. That is one where if you send me an email and picture, it will get up there. I updated it today with the uh, one of my favorite food festivals, the Greek Food Festival, is coming up in September. So that went on there today. Um, it took me a little while to find the right picture. For some reason, the spring one kept showing up, and I missed the spring one. So I'm going to be there, you know, for at least one or two of those three days in September. But so, uh, so happeninginbrockton.com, it's just a simple site and has listed some of the events that are going on. If you know an, of, of an event, send me an email or send Ann an email so she gets it to me so we can get it on there because I actually go and look there to see if there's something going on because right now I've got seven grandchildren visiting us and we want something to do with them besides <laughs> stay in the house. So if we want to send you something, or do we send it to that site? Do we send it to Send it to me directly. Email it to me. And what would that be? The, use, uh, we're using the rdrconsult at gmail.com. Okay. It's you. actually on the website. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we want to keep it fresh. As soon as something is over, I try to drop it off there and just add new events. And I know we're going to have a lot more this fall. Uh, Tower Fest just went on there, and that's already all the way out in October. So, all right. Well... Those that have to leave early, uh, Miles is somewhere. All right, Miles. Or, or, or this Councilor Ace. Well, okay. All right, we'll go ladies first, even if she, you know, had to just stay longer. <laughs> Councilor Ace. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, I, a special thank you to um, Ann Beauregard because, once again, she really works really hard with Pastor to bring us all together. Um, it's nice to see everybody here this uh, this evening, and I'm going to be really brief. My role in this is, is, as a city councilor is really to bring awareness, and I try to announce all the events at our meetings when I can, and uh, post them, you know, make the process easy to post them on the city website. Um, you know, I always say we have an amazing city, 
there's a lot going on. I hate when people say there's nothing going on because there's always something going on. Uh, for example, tonight we have Prova and tomorrow night's also Prova down, downtown, which is a great, um, you know, it's a, fun, it's a fun time just to go hang out, get um, something to drink or not or eat. You don't have to, but you can just sit there and enjoy the band and, um, you know, enjoy being outside, being a, it's a, enjoy the weather when it is when it's not raining unfortunately it's been raining uh, the last uh, few <laughs> few weeks but um so this so that's my role in this and I appreciate um, I appreciate everybody here because everybody plays a role in bringing culture to Brockton and um, you know we want to expand this so I'll do my part whatever I can do to keep expanding so thank you wait thank a minute, you wait a minute. Uh, not so fast. How can people get a hold of you Oh, my information is all over the place. So I always have my phone on me. I use it for everything. One number, 508-451-1632. Um, I have an email address, which is sazak, A-S-A-C-K, at C-O-B-M-A dot U-S. And, um, you know, our, the phone is the best way, really, just to give me a call. Um, it's on the city website. I have a Facebook page that's dedicated to um, Ward 7, but I'd, it covers a lot of events that happen throughout the city, so it's um, Shirley Azak slash Ward 7, um, Ward 7, so that you can find a lot of events there. You can message me on Facebook as well under Shirley Azak um, Ward 7. You can send me messages, but the best way, once again, is my phone, 508-451-1632, and I usually answer all the time unless I'm at a meeting like this. So, um, but I look forward to all these wonderful events. I know Pastor Reed brought up um, the Greek festival. So that's the uh, middle of September. So the last weekend in September is the Lebanese festival, which is at my church. So yes, which is good to get things back to a little bit of normal. Uh, I know a lot of the organizations are questioning how, you know, but I think they're going to make sure with uh, COVID that they're covering all the guidelines so we can have these events and keep everybody safe. So thank you again. Uh, it's I don't. It's the last weekend in okay. September, so okay. it's usually Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm. Okay. It's not. I know they put in the application. I don't know if it's. Um, they just started advertising it. Says Saint Teresa's. Yes, right. it's Saint Teresa's right down the street yep. on Main Street. Twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. That's okay. most likely okay. what it will be. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be seeing her at my door one of these days soon because I'm in Ward Seven. So. <laughs> You know, we have this thing coming up in an election. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I'm the exact opposite with, uh, as Shirley, use her phone to call, reach her. I mean, I really don't want to use my phone anymore other than for email and, you know, even texting is getting to be onerous. And one of my, one of my clients told me not to answer my phone ever. It's like, I need more clients like that. <laughs> so, all right, Miles, if you're going to come and talk about the War Memorial Building. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, my name is Miles Jackson, and I'm a uh, resident of Brockton, Massachusetts, since 1968. And I'm also a trustee for the uh, War Memorial Building. Is everybody familiar with the War Memorial Building here is in Brockton, yeah. right on West Elm Street? Uh, built in 1930 for our veterans of war. Um, have anybody ever been in the War Memorial Building? Yes. Okay. Very historic building. Um, I became a trustee, I'm guessing about seven, eight years ago. Um, at the time, th there's a lot of things in the War Memorial Building, auditorium, office space, um, library, a lot of um, World War I, two Korean War artifacts. They might, they might even have some uh, Civil War artifacts in there. They used to have a, um, a bowling alley downstairs because when this building was built, it was built for the um, veterans. So they had a lot of activities in this building, very popular building for decades. Um, it kind of fell off after the Vietnam War. Um, so um, Mayor Sullivan and the trustees in the Brockton community were trying to build it back up. But basically, I'm just here to tell everyone that um, space is available to uh, rent, rent or if you're a nonprofit organization, um, there's a good chance you could get the um, auditorium for free. Um, it just depends on your, um, your event and, and what it's for. 
<clears throat> right now, because of COVID, nothing happened in 2019, uh, excuse me, 2020. Um, nothing is still going on at the moment, but hopefully once things calm down, uh, we can start accepting applications at City Hall. So if you have an event you'd like to plan or do, you go to the mayor's office and they'll direct you on what paperwork to fill out. Then what will happen after that? Um, you will come and meet the trustee board, explain what your event is, and then we'll come back with some feedback on where to go from there. Um, as far as um, one thing you would have to pay for it, Let's just say you're a nonprofit organization. You would have to pay for the custodial fee to clean up. If you had some type of uh, event where it involved um, beer or wine or something like that, you would have to have a police detail. I believe you'd have to have a police detail if it was over, if you were expecting over 150 people. But they would explain that all to you at City Hall. Um, just trying to, anybody have any questions about the War Memorial? Right, they'll if they'll um, give you all that information down at City Hall. Uh, let me see. Okay, let me, I have a question. Yes, yes. So, um, will you eventually be involved in doing like tours of the memorabilia that you have there? Like, will you yeah, be neat? Yeah, that'd be neat. Yeah, that'd be something that I could bring that up with the trustees because, like I said, I was amazed at what's there. Unfortunately, over the years, some stuff has walked off but we still have quite a bit that will amaze you, um, dating back to the turn of the century. Um, again, it's, it's, it's dedicated to all the veterans of our f wars over the, over the years since America's been here. So um, is there any other questions? No, it's not connected to the VA per se. Um, you know, I, I understand where the VA's got the veterans and everything. Um, if they ever wanted to do something, they, they would reach out to us, but we're not really connected per se. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, definitely so. Uh, another thing about the, the, it was built in 1930, so there's no air conditioning. Yeah, so in the, in the um, starting in May or June, they, they halt the um, events until about September because there's no air conditioning. Um, there was some renovation done a few years back. We've got a new elevator in there. We've, um, the the uh, restrooms have been totally redone and some other things to make it a little bit more um, comfortable for our um, patrons. But let me just read, oh yeah, go ahead. Well, that depends on your organization, and because of COVID, we really don't have any um, prices now. To I have, I don't have any prices to give you, but um, that's when we would talk at the. If you had an event, you'd come in front of the trustee board, and then we would talk then about pricing. But let me tell you, it's it's a great deal. Um, I'd say since I've been on the board, seventy percent of the people that have used it. Uh, organizations that have used the War Memorial were not charged because they were a nonprofit organization. So if you're a nonprofit organization, there's a good chance um, you would you you'd pay very minimal. Yes, sir. Can you use your own caterer? Yes, you can. You can use your own caterer. Um, has to be licensed. Um, but I just wanted to read just about the War Memorial Building real quick. The War Memorial Building is the property of the city of Brockton and is supported by citizens' tax dollars. The Brockton War Memorial Building operates and maintains its facility on West Elm Street in Brockton. Uh, its mission is to honor and commemorate the fidelity, valor, and sacrifice of our, of our veterans. Any use of the facilities must be conducted in a manner that is keeping with the spirit of patriotism, citizenship, and goodwill to others. The Brockton War Memorial Building property stands as both a shrine to the memory of Brockton's veterans as a beautiful example of, of a monument and memorial. I'm a Brockton veteran. I served in the United States Air Force, and that's why they asked me to be on the trustee board. Um, 
We try to get veterans on the trustee board. We do believe I have once we do have one um, civilian on the board, but uh, we're looking at um, Brockton's vets as a number one priority and um, in the service, the Brockton community and the Brockton organizations. Any other questions? No, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yes. Right. I, I know. Of course. Yeah. Right. A, a, a building that size, it, it would cost. Well, I, I'm not sure what the cost would be, but I understand what you're saying. What we'll definitely, I will bring that information. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yes, sir. Do you have a live screen and protect with it? We do have a screen and we do have an audio system. The projector, uh, I don't think we have a projector there. I'd have to look into that. But we do have um, a microphone system for if, some, if they had something in the auditorium. Most events are held in the auditorium for those who've been there. Okay. It is. It's very beautiful. A lot of historic stuff in there. Um, I like the idea of maybe um, having a um, tour, walkthrough. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank you very much. But thank you very much for listening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Pastor Reed. And most importantly, thank you, Mr. Miles, for serving the country. We greatly appreciate it. My name is Jensen Denoris. I'm from the mayor's office. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to stay here too long because I have a, another meeting after at 10. Uh, a couple updates. Um, the, uh, the mayor and the mayor's office just recently collaborated with uh, Mr. Bill Hogan for the Brockman Hall of Fame. Um, uh, they, there was induction for, um, for the athletes and the coaches, and so it was an honor for us. And a couple of things I have to say that um, we're continuing our mayor summer concerts. It's actually every Wednesday until September. Uh, until September 22nd, and it's from 5.30 to 7.30 at City Hall Plaza. And then finally, most importantly, we, uh, Wednesdays, every Wednesdays, yeah. until September 22nd. Okay. And then finally, I um, just want to remind everyone that we actually have um, clinics this, um, this weekend. Friday, we have the, um, the vaccine clinic at Market Basket uh, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. and then we also have the vaccine clinic at the Shaw's at Shaw's on Crescent Street from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. So if you need to get vaccinated or if you need someone or a loved one to get vaccinated please join. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know I just got my letter today from the mayor to sit in on a uh, I don't know. Yeah, no. Oh well you know. I, I could do it, but I don't know if the eyesight would be really good aiming, but uh, no, and uh, on a council he's hosting, uh, I believe it's on August 25th, uh, for uh, just a review, and I think a lot of it's going to be the, some of the clergy from the town, a review of how 2020 was handled and how we can look forward to what we might be able to accomplish in 2022. And uh, again, I'm convinced a lot of that depends on how we handle this fall. So we want to be getting ourselves back to as normal as we can be. And I wonder what that word really is anymore, normal. But uh, we, we want to get back to not the way it always was, but something better. And that's what we're trying to do here. And so to, tonight we're... I'm thrilled we have uh, a couple of ladies from the uh, Brockton Cultural Council and they're going to talk about some of the c cultural grants that are available. Uh, and again, I've said at other meetings, you know, uh, two years I've been uh, awarded it for our research group here and it's really exciting and uh, I, I saved a stamp. I was budget conscious. <laughs> I, I, I brought my submission to them tonight. 
because I knew they were going to be here. So, but um, the the cultural council does a great job, and uh, I remember appearing before them a couple of years ago, and uh, you know, listening to all these other presentations that were going on, and 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 I'm like, wow, there there was. I never knew we had so many cultural dance groups in Brockton. <laughs> and it was just, you know, it was impressive to know that there are this many people that are out there trying to promote culture in our city. So ladies, if you'd come and share. Thank you. Um, can you hear me okay with my mask on? Okay. Um, so I'm Ginny Mahoney, otherwise known as Virginia sometimes. And that's Lisa Villani, and uh, we're on the Co Brockton Cultural Council. And I'm here tonight to just explain a little bit about the council and what we actually do. Um, the Brockton Cultural Council is the local funding arm of the Massachusetts Cultural Council, which is a state agency, okay? So we are part of, we come, um, we work with the state to grant uh, funding for projects in the arts, humanities, and sciences, okay? There's a brochure that Lisa's passing out um, that explains a lot of what we do. Um, and, and I'm just gonna go through that and then take questions if you have any. So the funds that you apply for are to be used, as, as I said, in arts, humanities, and sciences. And um, they must have a public benefit um, the public benefit could be the, the fact that you're an, a single artist doing a project that you want the public to be aware of or participate in. So it, it's, it's very flexible that way. Um, and we are a council of five right now. Um, we could use more members. And if you're interested in being a member of the Brockton Cultural Council, you need to um, submit a letter of interest to the mayor along with whatever your qualifications might be either either you're an artist or you're a person who loves culture uh, you're a scientist i don't know whatever it is that you think gives you qualifications to be on the council and so then the mayor appoints you so we're all appointed by the mayor and you serve normally you serve a three to six year term depending on the needs of the council so if the council doesn't have enough members to continue, you might end up continuing year by year. Um, and so um, in order to get funding, let me talk about the, um, the priorities first of all. We really are interested in collaborative projects with local organizations. Um, so if you're an individual and you're applying, we want to know that you're collaborating with a local organization. And if you say, I'm going to do a project at the Brockton Public Library, we actually ask for a letter from the Brockton Public Library saying, yes, we're happy to have this person come and do this project here. Um, we also are interested in, in proposals that serve underserved populations, and we're always interested in new projects, new things. Now, um, the, uh, the, the projects should be take place in Brockton, um, and they are really should not be um, funding that supplants other funding. In other words, if you're a school, for instance, we can't fund something that the school system should be funding. So um, there are some restrictions, and all that's um, outlined in this brochure. So um, I do have a list on the back of some of the projects that were funded last year in FY 2021. Um, a literacy program in the schools, the Brockton Public Schools Poetry Contest, uh, Fuller Craft, Craft Museum, Stairs of Justice, which was a new project this year, um, uh, IMU documentary film on immigration that Nubi Rato is doing, and several other, th other things, um, including um, Pastor Richard's um, project at the Irish uh, Cultural Her Heritage Center. So, um, so. Uh, here are some things that you need to know about applying for funds. The application is online only. We do not accept paper applications. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty simple proce process. Once, when they used to be paper applications, they were <laughs> only a couple of pages. Um, you have to submit some uh, su um, 
some supporting documentation or supporting information. And um, you have to have an idea of, yes. Well, um, if you've done a project in the past and you have brochures or if you're, um, you know, if you, uh, if you have any kind of, um, you know, a resume stating your qualifications or, you know, anything that would support your application. So let me talk about the grant application process because this year it's a little different only because the state is transferring over to a new website platform. So whereas normally you would have already been able to, during the month of August, to go in and maybe start your application, this year you cannot go into the website and start your application until after September 1st. And I say that because I attended a webinar the other night and they said, oh, it's going to be done by September 1st. And I don't know, I hope, hopefully it will be, okay? So uh, um, in order to access the um, website, you can go to the Mass Cultural Council website, which is um, massculturalcouncil.org, and look for the tab that says Local Cultural Council. And that will direct you, because right now our Brockton website is down until the new websites are completed. So um, right now we don't really have a website. If you want to contact us, um, you can contact us at Brockton Cultural Council info at gmail.com. That's on this brochure. Now, one other very important thing that I need to say about, um, about grants is, uh, actually it's two other things. Usually the grants are uh, $2,000 or less. Occasionally we grant more than that on certain special projects, okay? Um, but most of our grants are a few hundred dollars, uh, just, just so that you know that. Um, and uh, the, um, the other thing that you need to know is these grants are not direct grants. They are reimbursement-based grants. So your organization needs to spend the money first and then submit all your paperwork, that is receipts for the sound system, receipts for the artist that's doing whatever he or she is doing. Um, you cannot get funding for refreshments or transportation. So when we fund field trips for schools, for instance, we fund ticket prices, but not transportation. And they, um, they get transportation in other ways, sometimes through the big yellow school bus grant, uh, grants that are also through the Mass Cultural Council. So um, all of that said, I think I need to tell you when the deadline is. Okay, first of all, the website is supposed to be ready for application starting September 1st. Um, and the applications are due October 15th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. Don't wait that late. Okay. okay Any questions? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, I'm sorry if you drew a blank here. Um, usually we used to submit them, and then we used to refer to it as testifying. Uh, you guys. Okay, so th that remains to be seen depending on what is going on. We used to have, um, we have in the past, I should say, had uh, a meeting at the GAR room in City Hall at, in the evening after all the applications are in. I I think it's usually after that. Can you yes. remember? Yeah. yeah okay. Right. And and people can come and just give us a 10-minute spiel about their application and talk to us, and we uh, we can ask questions. That is not required in order to be funded. Okay. It is not required. Um, and I don't know. We didn't do it last year, obviously, and I'm not sure what we're going to do this year at this point. Um, depends on how things go. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Uh-huh. Okay, so that's a very good question. Um, we usually have our voting meetings. Uh, it takes, first of all, this is, we usually get about 80-something applications, and um, it's a lot to read because there are multiple pages. And so once the deadline passes, we wait a couple of weeks um, to give all the members a chance to read the applications, and then we start meeting sometime in November or early December to decide um, you know, whether we accept or uh, reject applications. So um, usually we're finished with our voting by the end of December or early January, 
in this, in this case will be January 2022, and we send out rejection notices um, by January 15th, and then you have uh, two weeks to um, rebut our rejection or, you know, re, um, sort of review it, have it reviewed um, either through us and or through the state. And then acceptance um, or, uh, yeah, grant letters, acceptance letters go out usually by the end of January. And it just depends on how our meetings, how efficient we are with our voting at our meetings. We usually pretty efficient. We usually do it in one to two meetings. Um, you know, they're long ones, but we get, them, we get it done. And all our meetings are open to the public and they're usually posted on our website. Right now they're not because the website is down, but um, as soon as September comes around, you should be able to see what, uh, when our next meeting is. So, because uh, we usually don't meet in the summer anyway, so. Any other questions? Yes. That's right. And and um, adjustments under, never over. So I would say, um, you know, overestimate a little bit. Um, just if you feel like you need to to give yourself a cushion. Um, oftentimes, we because we get so many applications for a certain amount of funds. Um, oftentimes we will partially fund something and there, um, I'm not sure if there's still a question on the application that says, uh, we can still do this with partial funding. I'm pretty sure there still is. Um, but in any case, um, you could be partially funded or you could be fully funded. It just depends. Anne. How, how much did the city get? Do you know from the state? Um, for 2022, yes. I don't have the figure off the top of my head because I haven't. Million? Yeah, yeah, right. There you go. How about a billion, though? <laughs> um, so it, you know, it just depends. Uh, last year, I wish I had that figure in my head. I don't. I apologize. But it, it, that information is always available on our website, like I said. And if you really want to know what was funded last year, you can email me, okay, um, through the Broughton Cultural Council info at gmail.com, that, that's right on here. I, I check that email address weekly. So it, you can email and ask to see the funding list. I have a funding list for last year. So if you wanna know, you know who got funding, um, you know, and I can also tell you what the, the amount is. I just don't have it in my, do you remember what it was, Lisa? I don't have it in my head, I'm sorry. I, that's a figure I should have had, but um, in any case, it's, it's, it's uh, public knowledge too, so yes. Um, I, you know, uh, how I said, been around, you know, doing these um, applications. Yes. They also have a separate, I'm going to say, program, for lack of a better term, for those who have structures, like buildings or what have you, that they can get funding through the Mass Cultural Council. Um, that's the that's the, the facilities fund, and that's a totally different. Um, if you go on the Mass Cult, Massachusetts Cultural Council, um, MassCulturalCouncil.org, um, you would be able to find the fu the facilities fund and lots of other programs that they have too. So, um, and here's something I wanted to say. On here, I say visit mass-culture.org for more information. That is the website that's, um, that you may not be able to get to right now, but if you go to massculturalcouncil.org, that's where you will be able to find, um, get to the Mass Cultural Council. And I, I have to tell you, you can just Google Massachusetts Cultural Council and you'll get the website as well. So, any other questions? Um, it, it really depends on how you uh, present it. I mean, if it's a benefit to the city and if it involves, I mean, that sounds um, humanities related. So, um, and it depends on whether it falls into those three categories, arts, humanities, and sciences. So, um, so again, um, and if you ever wanted to discuss 
particulars, again, you could e send a question to that email address and you know maybe we can chat on the phone or something like that. So, And we have some phone numbers in here too where you can reach um, Kathy Soroy, our chair, who, who was unable to be here tonight, Lisa, yeah, I know. Lisa, our co-chair, and I'm the secretary. So our phone numbers are here, too, in this brochure. I, I, just, I mean, I hope you highlight the presentation part of it. And because we, we've seen people, you know, have a great idea and then just yeah, it's just... Yeah, well, it just, it, it just depends. It, it has to be a clear um, sort of uh, a clear idea that's well, well uh, d described and um, that gives us an idea of how it benefits the city or underserved populations in the city, so. And the other thing, too, is, you know how you said resume and, um, I'm sorry, flyers or brochures or what have you? Uh -huh. Can people submit a video? Uh, I don't see why not, as long as it's short enough, it's not too huge of a file. I mean, I'm, you know, I know that, um, I think the application may only accept stills. Okay. Um, but but it depends on, it depends on the Mass Cultural Council um, the new application format and whether it, it whether you can um, submit video, and I'm not sure because I haven't had all the training yet. So oh, no, that's I, another I, thing. I, I was I was particularly asking only because um, if somebody has an event like this midsummer um, yeah. festival, it, you know somebody yeah. you know shows if you had video of that yeah stand, you know even for three minutes yeah oh wow you know look at all the you know there was so many different activities and different. Types of representation going on. I think, groups. I think stills would suffice, okay. and um, but but again, um, I'm not sure with the new application okay. is whether or not it's going to accept um, actual videos or not. So. All right, thank you. And would you consider coming again? Sure, if you okay, you know. Thank you very much. And I know they I know they deal with it quickly because last year I forgot until the last day, and when it says 11:59. PM, they really mean it. I got mine in a few hours ahead of the deadline, but it just, you know, it took them the regular time period to get a hold of me. And we were thrilled and look forward to some more fall events as well. Uh, also, over on the table, um, last Tuesday night, it was done by Zoom. We had a presentation on the uh, meteor shower, and so there are some of the handouts that from that presentation, some nice little cards, you know, NASA stickers, and there's a few other things over there, um, educational materials. I guess it was a really great presentation. I missed it because I got stuck at work, and so I can't wait till it's available on TV here. It is, it is already? Okay. So that, that's, uh, that's on my... Uh, get done quickly. Um, tonight afterwards, um, if once it gets dark, um, if people want to stick around a little bit out in the parking lot, we've got a clear view of the sky normally. <laughs> All right? But I was looking a little earlier and it looked a little cloudy, so I don't know what we are going to see, but uh, I'm hoping a couple of my grandchildren come over and uh, get a chance to see it, and if not, we'll be Googling who's got a live shot from somewhere else where it's nice and clear, um, because it is kind of neat when you start piecing these things together. But again, just something else to do here in Brockton. All right. Um, okay. There we go. <laughs> since last April uh, 2020, and, but it's actually our 13th year publishing. We publish all good news, um, very focused on the community. So plenty of things for your, grand, your grandchildren to do with you, all right? It's once a week, and it's free publicity for any nonprofit, any civic organization. So that's why I handed you all cards, and if you don't have one, I'll leave some out on the table. Um, and you just send us a press release and we put it in. Right now we have 2,300 subscribers that we send to. We've been doing it a year. So it's free. 
Um, and once things start to open up again, we'll be able to get out with our street teams and sign up more people. Um, but please sign up yourselves on our website and, and have your family members, and then we can all share the good news. Um, so it's, it's all these different events. We did have the Lions Club Summer Festival in it. Um, and yeah, we did. We've had Prova in it. Of course, we've done a ton of stuff with the library. Um, and just loving the news, the good news that's coming out of Brockton. So do I have any questions? Yeah, I mean, you, just so people know, it's emailed. It's emailed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ann. No, no, no. It's, it is an email once a week. Um, we have that's just focused on Brockton. And then we have one that goes out on Thursday that's more of a regional. It's called the Weekender. And that hits 17 communities. That hits 11,000 subscribers. So it's like an email newsletter type of thing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we publish it um, as an email blast and then share it on social media. Right. Yes? Do people like, do the write-up themselves and then tell you? Yes. No, we don't have reporters. No, we don't have reporters. It, no, no, that was a good question. I have done it. Thank you. Um, and um, we do on occasion, but we're largely powered by uh, writing interns. So they come in and process all the news. So yes, people write for, you know, but you want to get your news out. You know, you want to have your event publicized. So, yeah. And take pictures when you do something and send them to us, and then we'll, we'll publicize that as well. Pictures, JK? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, all right. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. Now, I know it works because I used to advertise certain things. With used to. Gift shop. Yeah, well, we have <laughs> the gift shop's been closed. Oh, right, right, right. And uh, people would come from all these other towns. We saw this on Buzz Around. That's the weekender. Our weekender goes out, like I said, to 11,000 people. So for nonprofits and organizations to post in that, it's $10 a week um, to get your posting in that. But for to be in Brockton, it's free. Is there any other questions? Everybody get one? I'll leave them out on the table. Please. Thank you very yep. much, Jan. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So I'm Ariana. I'm the Membership and Outreach Coordinator for BCA. Um, you guys have probably heard my spiel a few times at this point. but um, So at BCA, we offer our monthly PSA days, which is for Brockton residents, um, nonprofits in the city, and clubs and different memberships. Um, basically, with PSA day, it's a two to five minute public service announcement. You'll come to our studios basically just let us let the community know what events you have going on even if you just want to let them know about yourselves and and once that's recorded we edit it and we'll post it on our social media we'll air it on our channels all four of our channels um, and we can also provide you with your own copy so that you can use it for your own promoting and social medias um, as we get busier with September and the summer ending and school starting, we do have our event request form, which can be found on our website under the More About BCA tab. Um, if you fill out the event request form, it'll allow us to get all the information that we need in case you would like one of your events to be recorded and later on broadcasted. And also, if anybody's interested, we have our memberships as well. Um, with the membership, it's completely free for Brockton residents and it'll allow you to make your own public access show completely about what you, whatever you would want, basically. Um, so everything that I've mentioned so far is completely free as well. We just like to help out, get the word out, promote things. Um, and yeah, so this next PSA day is on August 23rd, yes. And so August 23rd, yes. And if you're interested in scheduling a time slot, feel free to just email me. It's community, C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y at bcatv.org. Or you can call too, but, <laughs> and yes. Any questions, if not?
sorry, yes. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> Ariana, could you also mention um, the process if you want your event actually filmed? Yes, so that was with the um, event request form. So basically, if you'd like it to us to come by, we, we ask that there is a little bit of like probably about a week or two um, just so that we can make sure our calendar allows us and we can schedule properly to make sure that we have enough staff. Um, so basically, we just go onto our website, the More About BCA tab, and then you'll find the event request form. And basically, you'll just fill out location, how long it's going to be, um, how roughly how big it will be and just a short description about the event itself and then um, I'll reach out to you and we can finalize if I have any questions I'll ask you about that and then we can finalize and get ourselves there <laughs> Thank you. no problem yeah so that's an exciting thing so it's a great service to have inside our community mm -hmm. we need it and it helps us with and that's why they're filming tonight so that you know people can know that this is what we do maybe next time we'll have to put the metal chairs out <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just means you have to come early, you know, or you get the metal chairs. I'm still trying to figure out what happened. I think it was two months ago. We had all the metal chairs out because somebody, you know, they were estimating to be maybe 75, 80 people show up, and you know, 25 showed up, and we we're thrilled for the 25. But everybody sat in the metal chairs. Nobody sat in the nice ones. There was like four of us up here in the comfortable chairs. So they can never. They're cooler, I guess, yeah. But it wasn't that hot that night, so. Uh, all right, now, is there anyone else that has some There's upcoming? I know. So why don't we start with this Frank? He's with Broughton Library Foundation. He can make an announcement. Uh, we have um, Book Seal coming up on the 28th of August, Saturday. Uh, should be, you know, reasonably, very reasonably priced books. And, um, all right, so Saturday the 28th of August at the library in the parking lot. Nope, no, inside. inside. Yeah. All right, this is in great. The library, right? in, the library. in the main library, reasonably priced books. And that starts? Uh, I think it's 10, 10 to 2, I believe. 10 to 2. All right, so that's coming up in August. And then you have John, and, and Shelley has second. two announcements. Yeah, yeah. Oh. second event. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. It includes that where um, the foundation is uh, sponsoring um, Brockton's Poet Laureate, um, and that is also that Saturday morning. I believe that will run for about an hour, and um, we're just um, doing the first inaugural of the Poet Laureate. Okay, Poet Laureate yeah, inaugural. Same building. Same building. Live Brockton Public Library, Public Main Library. Art gallery upstairs. In the art. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we look forward to that. I think you'll find some information online about that as well. All right. Okay. Um, you can come up here, you know, and that yeah. way they really hear you, you know, not just, you I, know, I, me. I, I, I okay, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is John Brzezinskis, and I'm president of the uh, Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association. That's one of several hats I wear in the city. Okay, so uh, we have um, an event coming up a week from Sunday, uh, August 22nd. It's going to be in the Frederick Douglass Garden, which is located at the top of Legion Parkway behind the uh, Firestone Building. Or if you're going the other way, it's at the top of uh, Frederick Douglass Ave, which is the old high street for people who have been in the city for a while. Um, what that is going to be is we're, we're rededicating a little free library which is basically the concept of that is a little free library is uh, the way I compare it, the, the easiest way to compare it, if, if, um, if you remember the old fireboxes, it's about twice that size. And the concept is um, uh, you leave a book and you take a book. And uh, there's several scattered about the city. Uh, we're rededicating one there that day. And uh, we're go also going to have, um, um, celebrating the end of summer, actually, uh, we're going to have free ice cream and pie for the kids and the adults, and uh, several other surprises for both the kids and adults. And it's a, a great community event. It's free. Uh, the pu the it starts at um, 1 p.m. 
one the rain date? Uh, uh, the rain date right now is we don't have a rain date. Okay. <laughs> it's not going to rain. Okay. The second event I want to tell you about is I'm also a member of the VFW Auxiliary uh, post 1046 here in Brockton. And uh, the auxiliary, in conjunction with the actual VFW post, is having a, um, we're calling it a freedom walk on September 11th. September 11th this year falls on a Saturday. Uh, it's, uh, we want to have it in conjunction with the ceremony they're having at City Hall, which is, uh, I believe they're going to try to time it when the first plane hit, which was, I believe, 846 or something like that. So um, our walk is going to start at 8 o'clock. It's going to start at the War Memorial Building. And uh, basically, we take the same route that um, the city takes for when they do have Memorial Day parades and Veterans Day parades. We're going to do that same route and walk to City Hall Plaza, where the, um, where the city will have their ceremony. Uh, remembering September 11th. Uh, obviously that event is free and the public is invited to participate and I think that would be a great event to commemorate what happened that day. A lot of people have forgotten about September 11th and we should never forget. Okay, okay that's all I have. Thank you. So lots to see at the Brockton Library. It's actually exciting news to know that the library is Absolutely. open. I know we're looking forward to being able to reopen our library here and get stable hours for it. Of course, couple hundred volunteers to catalog things would be really nice too but um, <clears throat> we're, again we're excited we're looking forward to that and again having the lectures and all that uh, Dennis okay first of all we've always got to thank um, Pastor Reed for letting us hang out here <laughs> and, uh, and this room has air conditioning and cushion chairs which we really like um, I, uh, I want to emphasize, you know, Miles Jackson spoke about uh, the War Memorial Building. Uh, they encourage auditorium style events, and the sound system works well. Some of us have had the pleasure of seeing some terrific speakers there and presenters. And most of the events that transpire there are free. There are fundraisers, and I want to pass that along. And um, also, um, the Broughton Public Library um, art display is in the um, auditorium People Park on White Ave. You come in that building and it's in that um, auditorium. And it's pretty neat. And that's really encouraging. The Driscoll Gallery uh, was named after a gentleman that was on like the first, uh, one of the first um, directors, trustees of a library, excuse me, not director, trustee of a library, the library system. And they, they have art up there. And this Poet Laureate's going to be kind of a big deal here. And Pastor Joseph can't be here to highlight that, but he was instrumental in, in mobilizing this. And this is why we have cultural affairs and tourism, so people can bring out super positive events and what have you. And a couple of people were part of um, the midsummer celebration. I mean, Ed Bray's here, and he brought a friend down from Lowell, so she got to see what... Um, you know, brought to look like and um, check it out. Um, we also, as Ariana mentioned, programs. You can have programs. I have one, and I'll have, have be on for one year in November. Books, art, music, and more. And uh, 
I've had a variety of different people on, um, you know, for example, artists and what have you. We're going to have a gentleman on. Actually, we're going to come and see him because the sculpture is so large and so fragile that we're not going to try moving it. So this is just an example of, you know, the tra you know what can transpire. This guy's 82. Okay, so we have people of all ages, all kinds of backgrounds with their art, with their music, et cetera. Um, Garden Club will be um, spinning off their meetings. Um, at the end of September, as it stands now, at Our Lady of Lords, we'll have more details on that the next meeting, so we can explain that. And these are just a few of the things that are coming off the top of my head. Farmer's Market is every s Friday, um, unless it rains or snows, and <laughs> actually they're out there in the rain, boy, you know, but anyway, and a lot of activity there. Um, what kids' activities until they have to go back to school. <laughs> and, um, they have a lot of, um, you know, besides, you know, different um, produce, you know, partners. There's, you know, sometimes it's music, books being sold from starts Library at, Foundation. At 10 in the it starts at 10 o'clock, goes to 2. Parking is at a premium. And, um, but anyway, again, examples. There's a whole lot of other activities that, you know, are coming to mind. Keep on sending. To Pastor Reed, also um, I want to thank BCA. And we want to highlight that our videographer this evening should probably edit this, but too bad. Anyway, she graduated from Broughton High. She now has her own studio, Emma Rose, and she um, just did a recent documentary, "Lean Into the Wind," about the Pan Am um, ride. And I um, can safely say I was not on it, but we admire the individuals and, 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 their, and their tribute. But that's just an example of the variety of things that are constantly highlighted at 1 North Main Street. And they do travel. And again, Kathy Bossa, K Bossa, B O S S A, at enterprisenews.com. Send her your pictures. She's loving it. All the great things going on and um, highlighting them you know, whatever, how small, how big, because it's just a demonstration of how eclectic the community is. So anyway, thank you, and keep on sending your stuff to us, and um, encourage other people to come. We know July and August are kind of a little bit quieter, but um, come September, please encourage the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, if they start their meetings, any other groups that are out there that, um, you know, I just can't come to the top of my head right now. We love you to be, you know, part of this. Make your announcements. We want to thank um, Jackie from Buzz Around, Local Cultural Council, um, you know, re representatives, Ginny and uh, Lisa. And uh, we, we definitely want to thank Miles for letting us know more about um, the War Memorial Building. I do want to mention one thing. Uh, when you can apply for Local Cultural Council with your interests, you can be all kinds of ages. I mean, you can be a crafter. You can be, you know, again, an artist. You submit something to the mayor's office. It goes from the mayor to city council. And then you have to be in front of city council and talk about why you should be on it. I'm exaggerating with the have to. But anyway, people usually present why they're interested. And it's voted on. It goes back to the mayor and, you know, you join. So anyway. Thank you very much, and have, uh, stay safe, stay well. Thank you. Again, I've mentioned uh, in the last couple of meetings, if you're looking for grant money for different organizations, reach out to me. I'm a member of a national organization that has grants, and it's a database in which I can search to see if there's anything that might fit something we're trying to do here in Brockton. I mean, I'd love, you know, I'd love to go to search on that tonight and say, um, retrofitting your war memorial building, you know, here's $80,000 to put in an air conditioning system. That'd be a wonderful thing to find tonight. I, I, I don't know, I don't think it's there, but, uh, but, there, but I can look. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, if, if I find that, I may be calling 911 because I might just have a coronary right then and there, but uh, I'll leave it up on my screen so that somebody can find it. Uh, but anyway, if you, if you need help in that way, you know, please, you know get, reach out to me. Even for the local cultural um, grant here, the council, you know, I can help. You know, it doesn't take, and Anne can as well, it does not take long to do one. And it's all kinds of different events. And I'm just excited about what we've been able to do. I'm looking forward to being able to send out announcements for some upcoming events this fall. We're going to really pack them in there. 
but uh, I have to compete with many other genealogical groups that are in the Commonwealth. And uh, so we have limited days that we can do it, but we can do nights and everything. We're flexible because we have our own facility. We're the only genealogical group other than any HGS in Boston that has its own facility, so which is really helpful. And again, we're glad to be able to share um, our nice, comfortable basement with you uh, for tonight. Uh, no air conditioning, and it's comfortable in here. I cannot guarantee what it's like when you go outside. Uh, it's exactly, and uh, and again, if you're interested in sticking around here, you know, um, f to try and get a glimpse at the uh, the meteor shower tonight, you're more than welcome to do it. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do when I walk out the door, other than start sweating, is um, check to see what the cloud cover is like because if we have cloud cover forget it you're not going to see them go on go home google it and watch it online where it's clear somewhere else all righty well again thank you for coming tonight and we look forward to uh, our next one we'll send out the the date by email uh, as we look at uh, what september might hold for us. Probably around the 16th, though, huh? Probably. I've got to double check where I'm supposed to be and, <laughs> you know, which part of the Commonwealth I'm in that day. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the, the six o'clock hour seems to work. Yep. And, uh, and then we'll, but it'll probably be about the middle of the month to give us some time to, you know, plan out some things. But again, I heard several events tonight that I do not have on happeninginbrockton.com yet. So get them to me. Somebody just got whacked on the leg. <laughs> okay, that's a reminder. Um, again, and there's, don't worry about how far out it is. We put it, I'm putting them in chronological order uh, so that we can plan these things. I mean, a 911 memorial, that is something that all of us should try and be at. And uh, any time it's something to do with our veterans, you know, I grew up in a home where November 11th was the most special day of the year. Yep. All right. You know, we all like Christmas, you know, and the 4th of July. Well, we like July 1st because that was, you know, I was up in Canada. But November 11th is called Remembrance Day in Canada. And... At this little cenotaph in a small town in Nova Scotia, North Sydney, Nova Scotia, there's been a member of the Reed family that has placed a wreath at the cenotaph ever since the end of World War I. They've never missed a year. And uh, we're not anticipating that some, we're going to miss this, you know. We even went last, we had, my brother went last year. Even in the midst of COVID, yep. he made sure that he was there. It wasn't much of a ceremony, but he got there with a wreath. And uh, so that's a special. Anything we can do to anything we can do to recognize our veterans. And uh, I, I should have brought some new things that we just acquired from a veterans organization. And it's just so exciting. But we've got to do that. So thank you again for coming. And uh, thank you for our local cable people for being here tonight. <laughs> oh, we, again, it's our pleasure to be able to open up. And people who don't understand as a church, we've been here 135 years. We never rent our facility. We've invited people to have events here. And, you know, but we never rent it out to anyone. And uh, so we've got somebody else that may be coming in here very soon to just use the facilities because there's no place else for them to go. But we're not going to announce it on television. <laughs> <laughs> the only criteria that may happen is saying no social media. <laughs> but uh, again, like every facility there are requirements that you have to follow 
like at the War Memorial, if you want to have alcohol, whether you're giving it away or selling it, if you don't do it without a license, somebody's coming after you. And uh, our policy is here is we don't allow it on the yep. property. And uh, it's just part of our insurance policy. So, again, all right, well, thanks. Have a great night, and hopefully we'll catch um, a few shooting stars out there.